250 tons to orbit? SpaceX engineers called Elon insane when he revealed Starship's expendable mode, until they saw the math. This wasteful rocket could launch three entire space stations, while others struggle with one satellite. But here's the part that shocked everyone. Musk might abandon reusability, his biggest obsession, for this. Why would the king of rocket reuse suddenly go backwards? The real reason could reshape space forever. Let's dive right in. Picture this. SpaceX's top engineers gathered in a conference room, staring at calculations that shouldn't be possible. For months, they'd been beating their heads against the reusability wall. Every simulation showed the same brutal truth. Making Starship's upper stage reusable was engineering hell. Then someone dropped the forbidden question, what if we just throw it away? Dead silence. This wasn't just any suggestion. This was heresy against everything Musk preached. Reusability was supposed to be the holy grail, the thing that would make space as cheap as flying Southwest. But then the numbers started flowing, and holy hell, what they saw broke their brains. Here's what was driving these engineers absolutely insane. When Starship screams back through Earth's atmosphere at 17,500 miles per hour, it doesn't just get hot, it becomes a literal meteor. The heat doesn't scale with speed. It scales with the square of speed. What does that mean? Even a tiny speed increase creates massive heat. We're talking surface temperatures of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot enough to melt titanium instantly. Hot enough to glow white hot like a star. To survive this thermal hell, every reusable starship needs 18,000 individual heat shield tiles. 18,000. Each one handcrafted each one critical. If even 50 tiles fail, the entire vehicle becomes a $90 million firework. The engineers were exhausted. Every test flight was Russian roulette with physics. Then came the moment that stunned everyone in the room. A junior engineer pulled up the payload calculations. Reusable Starship, 150 tons to orbit expendable Starship, 250 tons to orbit. The room went dead quiet. That wasn't just an improvement. That was a 67% payload boost. In one decision, senior engineers started double-checking the math. Triple-checking. The numbers were absolutely real. Want perspective? The entire International Space Station weighs 420 tons. An expendable Starship could launch that in just two flights. Two. Flights. The Space Shuttle's biggest payload? 27 tons. Starship expendable could carry nine Space Shuttle payloads at once. But here's what absolutely shattered their worldview. Every engineer in that room assumed expendable meant expensive. They were all wrong. Strip away the heat shields. Gone. Save $15 million per vehicle. Remove the landing legs. Gone. Save $3 million and 2,000 pounds. Eliminate the header tanks. Gone. Save $8 million in complexity. Delete the aerodynamic flaps. Gone. Save $12 million in precision manufacturing. Suddenly, engineers realized they'd been thinking backwards for years. Each expendable Starship would cost $40 million less to build than a reusable one, even though you throw it away. The manufacturing chief nearly fell out of his chair. Building reusable Starships required months of precision work on heat shields alone. Expendable versions could roll off the production line in weeks. But then came the game-changing realization that made NASA engineers go pale. Current deep space missions are pathetically slow. Getting to Jupiter takes eight years because rockets are so weak that spacecraft have to play planetary pinball, using gravity assist to build speed. Europa Clipper launched in 2023 and won't arrive until 2030. Seven years of travel for a distance that light covers in 45 minutes. Expendable Starship obliterates this limitation. Instead of years of complex orbital mechanics, missions could carry massive fuel tanks and burn straight to their targets. Mars in three months instead of nine. Jupiter in 18 months instead of eight years. We're talking about compressing decades of exploration into years. When NASA's planetary science chief saw these calculations, he reportedly said, this changes everything we thought we knew about deep space missions. Here's something that barely made headlines, but left Pentagon officials speechless. 
The U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory quietly ran simulations on expendable Starship for rapid global deployment. The results were classified for a reason. 113 tons of military equipment, tanks, helicopters, artillery, delivered anywhere on Earth in under 30 minutes. Current cargo planes take days to cross oceans. Starship takes minutes. One Air Force general was quoted saying, This isn't just a capability gap. This rewrites the entire strategic playbook. Just when expendable Starship started looking like the obvious choice, Musk dropped a bombshell that left engineers scratching their heads. We're still going full reusable. Wait, what? If expendable is cheaper to build, carries more payload, and enables impossible missions, why would SpaceX still chase the reusable holy grail? The answer shocked even veteran engineers. Here's the dirty secret about expendable Starship that no one talks about. Almost nobody needs 250 tons in a single launch. Seriously, the heaviest satellite ever launched? 76 tons. And it was too big to fit inside Starship's cargo bay anyway. It's like building a truck that can carry 20 elephants when everyone just needs to move a refrigerator. Most satellites weigh 2 to 6 tons. Launching them on expendable Starship is like using a nuclear bomb to light a birthday candle. The market doesn't exist yet for these massive payloads. But here's where Musk's true genius becomes clear and where engineers finally understood the full picture. SpaceX needs to launch 42,000 Starlink satellites. Each Starship can carry about 400 satellites per flight. That's 105 launches minimum. With reusable Starship, 105 upper stages used over and over. With expendable Starship, 105 upper stages thrown away forever. At current production rates, building 105 expendable starships would take 15 years. The math simply doesn't work for SpaceX's primary business. But here's where the story takes a shocking turn that left industry experts speechless. Musk isn't thinking about one rocket. He's thinking about 1,000 rockets per year. Literally, SpaceX is building two massive gigafactories, not rocket factories, but rocket production lines, like car assembly plants, but for spaceships. At that scale, the economics flip completely. When you're building three starships per day, throwing away a few hundred per year for special missions suddenly makes perfect sense. Here's the plot twist that left other aerospace companies scrambling to catch up. SpaceX isn't choosing between reusable OR expendable. They're building both capabilities. Super heavy booster, Always reusable, always lands back. Starship upper stage, mission dependent, reusable for routine flights, expendable for impossible missions. Why? Because Super Heavy contains 85% of the expensive hardware, 33 Raptor engines worth $50 million total. Losing that would be insane. But the upper stage, only six engines, much easier to sacrifice when the mission demands maximum performance. NASA's Artemis program is already using this hybrid approach, and the results are mind-blowing. The human landing system version of Starship will never return to Earth. It's essentially expendable, designed to become a permanent lunar base. Each moon landing requires 5 to 10 expendable tanker Starships just for refueling. We're already planning to throw away dozens of upper stages for lunar missions. That's not a compromise. That's the feature. Here's what's making NASA scientists lose their minds with excitement. Instead of one $5 billion ultra-precise telescope, they could launch 50 cheaper telescopes for the same cost. Instead of one fragile Mars rover, send 20 expendable landers packed with instruments. Failure becomes irrelevant when success is abundant and cheap. One NASA planetary scientist said, this is like going from having one precious Stradivarius violin to having an entire orchestra. But expendable Starship kills one crucial dream Point-to-point -point travel on Earth. Musk's vision of 30-minute flights from New York to Tokyo requires reusability. Nobody's paying $90 million for a one-way ticket, no matter how fast. So which future wins? Every choice has consequences. Every path closes other doors. Choose expendable. Unlock massive payloads and deep space missions, but kill cheap space travel dreams. Choose reusable. Enable airline-like operations and Mars colonization, but struggle with heavy payloads.
Choose both. Double the complexity, split the focus, but keep all options open. The stakes couldn't be higher. This decision will shape the next century of human civilization. SpaceX engineers aren't just building rockets. They're choosing humanity's path to the stars. But here's the most shocking part that left even Musk's inner circle speechless. The real breakthrough isn't the 250-ton capability. It's the realization that being wasteful might be the most efficient path to making space travel cheap. Sometimes the best way forward is to throw away perfection and embrace abundant imperfection. The engineers who were initially horrified by wasting rockets now understand. When you can build 1,000 rockets per year, throwing away 200 of them for special missions isn't waste. It's strategic abundance. And that mindset shift is what truly shocked the engineering world. So here we are. SpaceX just proved that sometimes the wrong approach is actually genius. That being wasteful might be the fastest path to abundance. But this raises a much bigger question. What other impossible problems are we solving the wrong way? What other industries are about to get the SpaceX treatment? Because if there's one thing we've learned, it's that Elon Musk doesn't just build rockets. He rewrites the rules of what's possible. The engineers who were shocked by expendable Starship, they're now the ones designing humanity's multi-planetary future. And honestly, that's just the beginning. What do you think? Is SpaceX's strategic abundance approach the future of innovation? Or are they risking everything on a crazy bet? Drop your thoughts below, because this conversation is far from over. And neither is SpaceX's next impossible move. Space Corps out. SpaceX just shocked Russia and NASA. With this insane moon-based trick, Russia's space chief went silent. NASA engineers couldn't believe their eyes. SpaceX just revealed they're literally crashing 50-meter starships onto the moon, then using airbags to tip them sideways into instant megahabitats. One starship equals 1,860 cubic meters of living space. That's 10 times bigger than the entire International Space Station, for one one-hundredth the cost. But here's what terrified space agencies worldwide. What if this isn't about the moon at all? Let's dive right in. Picture this. Three days after SpaceX's announcement, Russia's Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov storms into an emergency Roscosmos meeting. The transcript, leaked months later, reveals his exact words. If Americans establish permanent lunar dominance with technology we cannot replicate, our space program dies overnight. The numbers were devastating. Russia's moon-based plan, 15 years, $150 billion, six cosmonauts maximum. SpaceX's plan, two years, $10 billion, 20-plus astronauts living permanently. The math didn't just favor SpaceX, it obliterated every competitor. But here's what terrified Moscow most. They had no counter strategy, none. Within 48 hours, China's space agency held their own crisis meeting. Internal documents show they immediately redirected $40 billion toward emergency lunar capabilities. Their timeline? Accelerated by 10 years, but still arriving after SpaceX establishes dominance. NASA's reaction was even more telling. Instead of celebrating American innovation, they panicked about losing relevance in their own country's space program. But nobody understood how SpaceX would actually pull this off until the leaked engineering documents surfaced. Here's where it gets insane. Traditional space engineering says you can't safely tip a 120-ton, 50-meter rocket without massive ground equipment. SpaceX said, watch us. The airbag system sounds like cartoon physics, but the engineering is genius. Picture a 30-meter Kevlar balloon that inflates to cushion a skyscraper falling sideways. The bag weighs just 200 kilograms but handles forces equivalent to a building collapse. The process is terrifyingly simple. Deploy the airbag, inflate using stored compressed gas, retract one landing leg, and gravity does the rest. The entire rocket gently tips like a falling tree onto the cushioned surface. But here's what nobody expected. What happens after the landing changes everything. Within 72 hours, astronauts transform that horizontal tube 
into a multi-level space city, the main fuel tank becomes living quarters for 12 people. The oxidizer tank becomes laboratories and workshops. The header tanks become emergency shelters. Each section pressurizes independently, meaning one breach doesn't kill everyone. It's like having multiple space stations built into one vehicle. The same tanks that carried them to the moon become their radiation shielding once covered with lunar dirt. It's engineering disguised as simplicity, but there's a hidden problem nobody talks about. Lunar dust isn't Earth dust. It's microscopic glass shards created by 4 billion years of meteorite impacts. Each particle carries an electrostatic charge and clings to everything like magnetic needles. During Apollo missions, this moon glitter nearly killed multiple astronauts. Their suits were compromised within days. SpaceX's base needs to operate for years. The solution involves ultrasonic cleaning systems, electromagnetic dust removal, and specially designed fabrics that repel charged particles. One management failure turns the dream base into a death trap. But even more dangerous than the dust is what SpaceX discovered during their secret partnership negotiations. Behind closed doors, SpaceX isn't working alone. Japan's JAXA provides advanced robotics. India's ISRO contributes low-cost launch capabilities. Even competitors like Blue Origin supply specialized equipment. Why? Because the technical challenges are so immense that no single organization can solve them alone. It's cooperation disguised as competition. The European Space Agency quietly provides life support expertise. South Korea contributes advanced manufacturing. Australia offers deep space communication networks. But here's the twist. These partnerships aren't just about moon bases. Every challenge solved on the lunar surface directly applies to Mars colonization. Tipping starships sideways? Same technique works on Mars. Converting fuel tanks to habitats? Even easier with Mars's thicker atmosphere. Growing food in artificial soil? Mars regolith is actually more fertile. The moon base isn't SpaceX's end goal. It's their $10 billion Mars training facility. Every lesson learned, every system perfected, every problem solved brings human settlement of Mars one step closer.